The two Koreas are still technically at war, with an armistice agreement signed 65 years ago, not a peace treaty. However, now there are efforts to get over the last hurdle, especially with the inter-Korean summit coming up next week. Our Che Shi Young tells us more. Will the third inter-Korean summit provide the momentum to formally end the seven-decade-long Korean War? At the first summit in April, Seoul and Pyongyang agreed to declare it over this year. But Pyongyang and Washington can't seem to agree on what has to be done first for that to happen. Pyongyang demands that they end the war right away, but Washington insists that North Korea hand over a list of all its nuclear-related materials first. South Korea special envoys who visited North Korea last week suggested working simultaneously toward the end of war declaration and the nuclear list. Kim Jong-un is known to have said he's willing to work more proactively if the two can go simultaneously but laid out no new measures for denuclearizing. Kim also said declaring an end to the Korean War would neither weaken the South Korea-U.S. alliance nor require the withdrawal of American troops from South Korea. At the moment, what Kim Jong-un has described is a trust-building gesture to assure the U.S. that the declaration won't have a negative impact on the South Korea-U.S. alliance. South Korean President Moon Jae-in said the declaration would only be a political affirmation that hostilities between the two Koreas are over. The peace declaration could bring about North Korea's denuclearization, a new phase in inter-Korean relations, and a more peaceful Korean peninsula. The key would be whether the two Koreas can find the middle ground in their nuclear negotiations at the summit next week. That result will be shared by Presidents Moon and Trump at their summit to be held on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly, which could kickstart the three countries' move towards ending the Korean War later this year. Choi Xiong. Arirang News.